everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop. And we've got a brand new exciting series for you. And this is the ultimate spinnerbait series. Over the next four parts, we're gonna be talking about everything you need to know about one of the best baits ever created for bass fishing. And that is the spinnerbait. Uh, in this first part, we're gonna give you a little overview and then we're gonna jump right into what is, in my opinion, the most critical part of a spinnerbait, the blades, okay? But let's start with a general overview. And what is a spinnerbait? Why is a spinnerbait so good? Well, spinnerbait is, if you look at it, it's a bait that utilizes a wire, a head, a hook, and the blades. And that combination provides something that is very unique in bass baits, right? Think about this. Most bass lures that we pick do one thing. They do one thing really well, and they only appeal to one sense of a bass, right? You throw it out, that bait has a wobble, and that's why the fish eat it. You throw it out, that bait has flash. That's why the fish eat it. You throw it out, that bait has a good shape or a good profile. That's why the fish eat it. But the spinner bait does a great job. And this is the reason I think it's been around so long and it's still as good as when it's created. A spinner bait does a great job of, of appealing to multiple senses of that bass. Okay, so when you look at it, if you've never seen a spinnerbait, you kind of look at it and you're like, why in the heck would they hit that thing? But when that thing's coming through the water and these blades are turning and flashing, it's providing multiple reasons for that fish to hit it. In no particular order, let's start with flash, right? When those blades spin, as that spinnerbait moves and hits things, and that blade turns, it provides flash. You can see it right there, just on the camera, right? Look, just as I'm turning it here, I'm, I'm making that blade flash at you a little bit. So visually, a fish is attracted to a spinnerbait because of flash. A spinnerbait with its blades also produces vibration, right? As those blades turn, those blades have cups. We're gonna get in the blades in a second. The cupping in that blade, boom, 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 provides a vibration. Fish through its lateral line, a bass through its lateral line is attracted to it for vibration. But last but not least, let me tell you visual attraction, right? And fish are sight feeders, largemouth spots, especially small mouse, when, when they're feeding, they feed with their eyes, number one. What does that thing look like when it's coming through the water pretty quick, even in crystal clear water? A lot of these blades, two blades on the spinnerbait flashing and turning and vibrating with this skirt that's kind of breathing with a focal point, which is the head. It looks like a school of bait fish. It looks like a couple little fish swimming together, which visually is a very natural thing. So in a nutshell, why a spinnerbait, the overview? It appeals to multiple senses for that fish, right? Uh, flash, vibration, and the visual of it being a school of bait or a single big bait fish, right? Great visual. So it appeals to three senses. All right, now I want to get into, in this first part, the blades, because that is the most important. Let me mention, you're going to be watching this series over the next four weeks. Watch the whole thing, because in the next couple series, we're going to talk about size and color. We're going to talk about add-ons to the spinnerbait. 
In the third segment, we're going to talk about retrieves, which are so important. And then finally, in the last one, we're going to talk about rods and reels, and that's pretty important too. But in that pecking order, these blades are really, really critical. And I want to talk about how to select a spinner bait based on blades. Um, that always seems like a confusing topic. So let's break it down. And I want to look at blade styles and blade combinations, okay? Blade styles and blade combinations. And so let's get to uh, the first category. And we've got blades that are round blades. Okay, you look at this spinner bait. By the way, this is just a little Mullix double Colorado spinner bait. Two round style blades. Look at that blade, it's, it's very round in shape. And a round blade, once again, that round blade is called a Colorado. A round blade produces the most vibration, right? So when you think about that, you know, you say to yourself, okay, when do I want a round blade versus a Colorado or a teardrop, uh, an Indiana or a teardrop blade or elongated or willow blade, right? Why, why would I want a round deep cupped Colorado blade? And the simple answer for this one is vibration. Maximum vibration on a round cupped Colorado blade, okay? Maximum vibration. Um, I want a Colorado blade, I want a round blade when I need more vibration. And here are the times, real simply put. Dirty, stained, muddy water or low light. In a simple nutshell, when I'm picking a spinner bait and the water is dirty or muddy or stained, or if I'm fishing dark light conditions, heavy cloud cover, rain, uh, nighttime, evening, dusk, dawn, dark, I want maximum vibration, so I'm picking a Colorado blade. Okay, so the first style blade is a round blade, Colorado. The next style blade is an in-between blade. And I, I call this one, I also call this one a teardrop blade, but the, the name for this style blade is Indiana. And when you're looking at Indiana, it's not elongated like a willow, and it's not round like a Colorado. It falls somewhere in the middle. And I like that Indiana style blade for middle of the road conditions. So now if we're talking, now you're talking about when you want a little bit of flash and a little bit of vibration, the Indiana style blade is a great choice, okay? An example for in-between conditions would be stained water, um, stained conditions, not dirty and not clear, stained conditions, great time to fish in Indiana. The other great thing about an Indiana is because it's a little bit of both worlds, it's a good blade to throw when you're not sure. When, when, when you're kind of confused and you're not sure, you can't go wrong with an Indiana. Before we get on to the last one, the other thing I love about an Indiana is it becomes a great blade to add as a top blade on a spinner bait. I really love an Indiana as a smaller top blade to a bottom blade. Whether that bottom blade is an, a, a Colorado or whether that bottom blade is a Willow, having a small Indiana up here on the top 
is a nice little compliment because again, it's a perfect in-between between flash and vibration, okay? The Indiana, the teardrop. All right, now let's get into the Willow. And this one, uh, if you've ever seen a spinner bait, if you fished a spinner bait, I know you've fished this one. And now we're talking about the elongated willow blade. The willow blade, that elongated, long willow style, gives us the most flash, right? Less vibration. Not no vibration, still, there's still some vibration there. Less vibration, but maximum flash. And we want maximum flash when the water is clear or clean, right? Not dirty, not muddy, not, not ugly, not lightly stained, not acidic or cedar, not just stained, but clear water. We want that willow blade, okay? So clean, clear water, because I want maximum flash, right? The other thing is light. It's the opposite of that Colorado. We want it that round blade when it's dark at night or when it's low light. But when it's bright out, when that sun is booming, the middle of the day, a high sun, high bright skies, that willow is the better choice, right? Because of that flash, a little bit of vibration, but willow provides the maximum flash. Okay, now I wanna jump back and I wanna talk about willow or Colorado based on cover based on the cover you're fishing, okay? Simple rule, here it goes. Soft cover, grass, weeds, lily pads, bulrush, grass, soft cover. I prefer the willow. The reason is that elongated blade slips through the grass better. So grass cover, Willow, hard cover, stumps, logs, brush, docks, hard cover. I prefer the Colorado, right? I don't need it to slip through. I want it down there thumping and actually banging off of that hard cover, right? I want that thing hitting the wood, hitting the stumps. So hard cover, I prefer the Colorado. Once again, let's get back to that Indiana. If you've got a mix of hard and soft cover, that's a great blade selection because it's right in the middle. All right, two more things we're gonna go over with blade selection. The next one is water temperature. This is a big one, guys. This is a big one. And just like we have a simple rule for cover, we've got a simple rule for water temperature. The colder the water, the more I'm inclined to go to a round Colorado blade, right? Cold water, because we want it to slow down and we want that thump, that attracting thump in that cold water. So cold water, I'm more apt to go to a Colorado blade. But hot water, warm water, Super hot, summertime, 70, 80, 90 degree water temperature. I want a willow. And that willow is gonna give me more flash and it's gonna let me fish the spinner bait faster, right? Colorado round with cup, you can't really burn it. It, it has too much cup. But in hot water, when I wanna start burning this spinner bait, we're gonna talk about that in the third segment when we talk about retrieves, that willow blade allows you to fish the spinner bait faster. So cold water, Colorado, warm water, willow, once again, what about in between water, water temperature that's not hot or cold? 
great situation for in Indiana. So moderate water temperatures, right? Water temperatures in the 50s to 60s. It's a great choice for an Indiana. All right, last but not least is blade um, style on the spinnerbait. And I want you to look at these different configurations that we can pick. We have a single, one blade on the spinnerbait. We have a tandem, a tandem with two different style blades, right? Here's a tandem with a little Indiana and a little Willow. Here's a tandem with an Indiana and a Colorado. So these are tandems. And then the last one is called a double. So it's two blades of the same style. Here goes a great little rule of thumb to end this first segment on spinner baits. And when we want maximum vibration, when vibration is the only thing we care about, a big single blade is the deal, okay? A big single blade when, when we want vibration is the deal, okay? So I love a big single, dirty water, dark conditions, cold water. I love a big single. By the way, there's that short arm lover, which is really a hybrid spinnerbait. We're gonna talk a little bit about that in the next segment. Um, single blade, maximum vibration. Double blade, double, remember, two of the same blades, especially two willows, maximum flash. Maximum flash, nothing beats a double willow. Two willows, two long blades, giving you the most flash. It's a great combination. But of all the blade combinations, the tandem is my favorite. And you know, when you look at it, you really get a, a feeling for why the tandem is so good. Because a tandem spinnerbait, two different style blades on the same arm, Indiana Colorado, Indiana Willow, gives you the best of all worlds, right? A tandem spinnerbait is truly the workhorse of spinnerbait fishing. And it gives you the most bang for your buck. So flash, a little bit of in-between flash with a lot of vibration, a little in-between vibration with a lot of flash, right? A tandem gives you the best of all worlds. So this is a great choice, especially if you don't wanna buy a lot of spinner baits or a lot of different blades, a tandem is a great choice. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a mouthful, but we really hammered one of the most important things of spinnerbait fishing, which is blade style, blade selection. In the next one, we're gonna jump right into size, color, and add-ons. Then we're gonna talk about retrieve and finally tackle. I hope you enjoyed it, man. This is the first part of the Ultimate Spinnerbait Series, gone over everything you need to know to become a better spinnerbait fisherman. Man, if you like this, what you're hearing, if you like these shops, if you like these series that we're doing, hit that subscribe button down there. See it sitting down there? Mash that button and we are gonna get new ones to you every single week. If you're already a subscriber, do me a favor, tell your friends, tell your buddies, your cousins, your, your nephews, your neighbors, tell them about Mike Iconelli fishing on YouTube. We're here to help teach, we're here to help you become a better angler. Uh, enjoy, have a good one, we'll see you next week.